All right, fellas, so we're trying our luck at the awesome Pamlico Sound redfish fishery. I had some luck here before. It produces some of the largest redfish in the country. So we'll do a little of each. We're gonna do what we caught today. And then on top of that, we're gonna talk about this new personal vessel I have. A couple schools of bait here. I think they're getting worked. Oh, there they are, there they are. Yo! Took all morning to find a couple of these things. Oh my gosh, this was, that was such a fire drill. Oh my God. I'm gonna be under you, I think. I'm under you. Oh, we're so screwed. That's all right, it's all right. Holy crap, we've been chasing these things down. I know. Oh my gosh. That was insane. I can't believe we didn't just lose those fish. We tangled so bad on these things. Oh my God. <laughs> That's insane. I can't even stop this fish. Jeez. I'm under you over there. Yeah, I think I'm just under. Yeah, I think I finally got, got him turning this way. Wow, it was absurd. This fish just came out of nowhere. Yeah. That is a good one too. Wow, what a fish. Just one. That was absurd, man. I didn't get much of it on camera. I thought I was rolling. It's like, this, that's what like stripe, good old days of striper fishing used to be like, of real stripers. Yeah. Yeah, mine is nice too. Gosh. I think it just came off the ocean today probably. Gosh, look at these fish, man. Oh. Yeah. That's a giant fish right there. God. God. Got a real measuring board, Captain? All right, there we go. We just landed. Absolutely gigantic redfish. It sucks I missed the hookup on camera, but this thing is massive fish. Oh baby. I did I only like a tail end of it. Good gosh. Oh, I hit my remote while I was trying to hold them up. Golly. Alright man. I'm guessing this is a High 40 inch redfish. We're gonna revive him for a second, so I'll just bring him over to Andrew for a quick little measurement. Oh my gosh. That's a fish. That is a fish. Glad we caught up to that. I was worried for a second. They were hauling ass where I was. I wish I would have had a whopper flopper tied on. Oh, you would, they would, I think they would annihilate any top order there. Dude, that would have been awesome. Oh, put them at 50, 60, okay, whatever. 47, probably. Somewhere around 40, 47. 48. That's, that's a beauty. All right, man. All right, this is called the drum drop. All right, so these drum or redfish, uh, 
five feet of water was kind of the depth they were in. They were moving so fast. False out of the court speed. If you ever chased uh, uh, Albies, talking like as fast as you can go. And that's it. They just like blasted through. Got one. Andrew got one. We had a big tangle. Uh, we've been at this for like three hours. That was my first bite for like three hours. Probably Andrew's first bite also. Redfish are typically on the bottom, but the big guys, big guys come up on top. You can get them on top water. I mean, those big reds, when they're, when they're around and they're on the feed, yeah, they'll be anywhere. So how do you catch these redfish, right? Um, this guy right here is called a popping cork. Redfish are very attracted to noise, as are a lot of fish. Um, you know, I came from an area where this was not fished at all, and I'm very surprised um, that no one ever tried it for striped bass real heavily in the Northeast. Um, at least bigger stripers, I think they attract to that, they're attracted to that noise. Um, I'd say anywhere from two to three feet of uh, leader. And right here I've got a, you know, use your favorite lure basically on the end here. Something with a lot of action and a lot of wiggle. Um, this is a 3 8 ounce VMC jig head. Uh, it's an Elias Shad and White, five and a half inch one. And yeah, you can work edges of bait. Um, it'll work if the fish are up top. Sometimes the fish are gonna be just, you know, corralling bait. And that's kind of how, you know, yeah, that's how you catch these fish in a nutshell. Um, it's a fun little fishery though. Pamlico Sound, I would say, most definitely is in the top three uh, largest redfish fisheries in the world. Um, uh, so our world record came from North Carolina. Um, that fish I had there, my, my grip was probably 35, maybe 40 pounds, possibly 45, but 35 to 40 is a good estimate. Um, a lot of these fish range from 30 to 50 pounds, and without a doubt, you can get yourself a, a 60 pounder. What makes this fishery so exciting versus more the regular red fishing is, this is like, they, they, these redfish of this area are more pelagic than they are, you know, creek fish. They, they roam these, this giant sound looking for schools of bait and then they, they bust up on it. All right, we're gonna get back to the cars now. Uh, another round, uh, still kind of a slow day, but you know, we got one fish each that was kind of worth it. Um, and then after that, we'll talk about this kayak and I'll show you all the, all the details, how we load it, how we're transporting it. Uh, a lot of cool things. Really, really liked it. We'll try this again. I, I do enjoy this fishery. It's just, it, it's tricky and it can be uh, extremely hit or miss. Okay, I've got the delight of Meg as camera woman. Hey guys. Hey. All right, so we're gonna take this guy off. Um, and then we're gonna swing it around back and I'll tell you about exactly everything we're doing with it. It's been raining. Um, so I put the second contact point um, to run a cart through. Uh, I got this inspired from another YouTuber, MDLR Fishing. He basically runs the straps from the cart over here through off so they don't slide off if you're rolling it. Or I guess you can use the seat. I'm going to leave the seat on and just um, probably just run the straps right here. Alright, so, oh, I'm soaking wet. <laughs> Sweet setup you got back here. Yep, wardrobe change. Mm, wardrobe change, I was wet. <laughs> lots of other people have reviewed this guy. Lots of other people have talked about it. Lots of publications. Uh, I'm gonna try a different route here. Gave it like three, four days. I also waited about four months before I decided that I'd like to fish out of one of these, or try it at least. Um, full disclosure, I've worked with Old Town for over a year now. Uh, I've had the ability to top to fish out of their Topwater 120. And I fished out of a Predator PDL for a year. I put more hours in the Predator PDL than I did on two Hobies. Uh, so the Topwater 120 was not for me. And Old Town knows with me, it's, you know, they're playing a little bit of roulette because I'm pretty honest about if I like something or I don't. And um, I've stated things that, you know, are pluses and minuses about those platforms. And I just laid out what I thought was the biggest negative that we saw right here was weight. And you probably imagine that uh, somebody who fishes out of more manually powered kayaks that are a little smaller you know, is used to a lighter weight kayak. That's kind of understandable. However, uh, I have been kind of 
blown away by the things I can do off this platform that I'm not able to do on any other platform. So first of all, in terms of fishability, you can do anything you, you want to do with this as you would with a manually powered vessel. But in addition, I've always been kind of apprehensive about uh, powered kayaks or putting a motor. I've seen for years this concept's been around motors on the back, uh, motors in drive wells. This is the first system I've used that felt so natural to the platform I jumped on. Everything has been integrated in uh, pretty much effortlessly and intuitively. That's really key. Uh, so the kayak's kind of an more or less controlled by this remote. You can have a backup on your, your phone app. Uh, you can manually steer it with the, the, the foot pedal rudders, etc., etc. But what does this really mean? What am I gaining, you want to know? First of all, your, your speeds are matched to your, your manually powered vessels. I'd say anywhere you're going three and a half knots to 4.8, somewhere around there for the most part. Uh, that's what I'm able to go, but that's based on my weight and maybe the weight I put in the kayak. Maybe you're going to get a different performance. Um, but the other thing here is what this motor means for your fishing. First of all, it, it opens up a lot of fishing opportunities that were kind of tough or really difficult on a manually powered kayak. Specifically, fishing in current and using anchoring technology. Previously, current was one of those things that could be kind of sketchy. Let's say I want to try to anchor up on a wreck that's kind of small, maybe 90 foot, uh, and there's a decent one to one and a half knot current. With a kayak, you need a lot of extra anchor rope to do it safely. So you're talking about anchoring up in 35 feet of water, you're gonna need probably like 90 feet of rope. Uh, there's no way to hit that mark ever consistently. Or if you're trying to fish a bridge and chunk baits on it or fish live baits, here I've got an inlet, I gave it a try the other day uh, to fish live baits on my inlet. And, and it's a, impossible to do that on a manually powered car, kayak because I'm going to be moving with a decent amount of current. There's no way I can hold that bait in place long enough to not get snagged or not get blown off. And then on top of that, anchoring in that situation will never ever happen because I can't even imagine getting an anchor stuck in the rocks there or getting an anchor, you know, getting my anchor stuck and boat wakes are coming by. This guy, with this guy, you know, you're getting rocked around on a boat wake, it'll slip off safely. And then on top of that, it'll use whatever GPS satellite technology it has just to mosey you right back on it. And that opens up a whole lot of line of different fishing opportunity, uh, at least from the saltwater perspective. Bridges, uh, rips, a lot of stuff becomes a lot more fishable than it used to be for sure. Um, the other thing is uh, the spot lock feature, which basically you know, holds you in place, obviously. Uh, in terms of practical fishing, one thing I didn't think about was uh, a lot of times if you break off, uh, you're, you're untangling a rig, untangling some trash fish, you're all jacked up, you hit the spot lock button and you're not going to get drifted, you're not going to drift away or try to fight current while pedaling, adjusting your rudder, you know, doing a hundred things trying to multitask. It gives you that minute. To, to really assess your situation, do what you need to do in a really stress-free way. And that's also pretty cool, aside from what SpotLock actually does. It comes in handy in a lot of practical situations just to readjust what you're doing. A couple things I didn't want to miss. You know, I don't want to get into the features, how many rod holders, how many scupper holes. Yeah, it's, you, you can find that very easily. Um, anchoring, stuff like that. And I didn't put it too much in this last video, but this is the first fishing platform I've ever been on where I'm standing up, moving the kayak, moseying around, looking at uh, bunker schools or pogey schools, looking which one might have fish on it, and moving up to them while still completely controlling this. Um, yeah, I guess kind of like a skiff, right? That's the first one. But uh, what I want to build on next is this is a lot of fun to fish off of. And that's really important. I'm saying this genuinely. Um, I wasn't sure if I was going to have fun doing this. It's a big reason a lot of people will get involved with this is because it's fun. And I had a blast on this. This is the most fun I've had on a fishing platform probably since I've gotten into kayak fishing. I've fished on boats plenty. Small boats, big boats, party boats, you name it. 
sure there's some fun to it but this was like a different experience and a different kind of fun that i can't wait to share it with meg it, it, it's fresh it is just so different i've got kind of that feel of you know that personal feel with the kayak fishing but i've got a little more range a little more things i can do and i thought the performance of what you can do on this met my expectations that there was nothing that i was like oh i wish i could do this the only thing that ever came up into this conversation was the weight to take it through a surf zone that's about it instead of that i'm gaining a lot of stuff with this that uh is so practical it's so fishable i think it's a big game changer for the average saltwater guy and i'm sure in the freshwater it's a different different world we're talking about but for saltwater fishing and um you know, I was kind of apprehensive because I didn't see enough guys taking it into big salt water and fishing and doing things with it in bigger salt water, uh, inlets, bigger bays, etc. Environments I came from up north, environments I fish with here, fish in here in North Carolina, and I've you know done three, four trips with it so far, and yeah, it blew my expectations away of what it can do, how it fishes. It's a ton of fun. I think that's about it in terms of what really excelled for it uh you know you can look at the boat i mean everyone else has showed it what it is what it can do sure put a fish finder there put some rod holders and we'll get into that in the future man let me not bog you down on the details of what little tricks i did so yeah that basically covers it uh we'll get back to that that redfish fishery it's a tough one but it can be when it's good it's probably one of my favorite fisheries uh that i've experienced is that pamlico sound uh, redfish fishery um, click on the video's description and there's a link to click on to look at this kayak or boat, whatever you want to call it. I know that's going to be a dramatic thing. It's a, is it a kayak? Is it a personal <laughs> fishing platform? To me, that doesn't matter what you want to call it. Um, to me, it matters if you're having fun fishing again or if, you're, if you've never had. Let me rephrase that. It, to me, it, as long as it matters, you're having fun uh, fishing whatever platform you choose. Uh, I think this will be a practical and fun way to fish for a lot of people. Uh, I'm going to continue looking forward to using this guy. Uh, this I can't is, wait to use it. Uh, I'm, yeah, <laughs> I am really just excited to keep using it. And it's a genuine excitement. I, I get offered stuff to fish out of and all that stuff, and I'm not really that interested. And like I said, I did take my sweet time before I said I want to pull the trigger and fish out of this. I don't want to waste Old Town's time. I don't want to waste my time. I want if I'm gonna fish out of a platform, it's something I want to make sure I like. You know, it's it, I, no one wins. If I put out F content for for a free kayak or a free boat, that's not good. So uh, you know, everyone wants to win when they you know when something when you change a platform or do something different. Um, so yeah, I think we picked the winner. Hopefully, uh, I, you know, the next thing here is test of time. That's really the next thing everyone wants to see is you know. How long are, you know, am I going before I hit any snafu with this? Um, everything else, it passed all my other expectations away. Blew them away with flying colors. Now we're gonna fish it hard, fish the crap at it, and see what we can do with it. And so hopefully you will enjoy watching that. Um, yeah, questions, anything like that, just check out those links I'm gonna put in the video's description. It'll give you all the info you wanna see about this guy and we will catch up with you very soon. So Meg, you're gonna jump on it yes. the next couple days. I'm gonna have you fish out. So. All right, thanks for watching, fellas. Bye.